So growing up as a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Because you were exposed to that life at a young age, but I'm no, sure but that's not. Yeah, I was. A, I had a good, you know, childhood and stuff. But I always thought about money. Mm. I always wanted money. I was like a gold digger, mm -hmm. just to keep it 100 and funky with you. Mm -hmm. I was born a gold digger with a shovel in my hand. <laughs> Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. So, you know what I'm saying? Me, my goal, uh, uh, 50 Cent, you know, may, that's my main man, you know, may, may, may he, uh, he, he hear this. You know what I'm saying? He told me, he said, Ken, I, I was bragging to him one day. We were shooting the PIP video. I was, yeah, nigga. Yeah, pimp self holds down, nigga. Biggest show ever, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, you got the right nigga here. <laughs> and 50 looked at me and said, Ken, do it again. And I said, what you mean do it again? He said, you only get one time to be that nigga. You know what I'm saying, me? So what I got it from that is that you got to reinvent yourself. That's so, hard. So ever since I met him, I've been reinventing myself, and I think that that's the part of the game that a lot of niggas miss. You know what I'm saying, me? You know, like, you know, I, when I was doing 40 million records, I was on everybody's album, I said I got to go to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Then I started getting into real estate, into daycares, you know, made millions in that game. Then I got tired of that bullshit, and then I said, man, let me go do something different. Then mm -hmm. I went to Dallas and opened up me a, a store up there. Sure you know, did. Then bought a, a lot of property in mm -hmm. Kane, Texas, you know, mm -hmm. bought a house in Richardson, you know what I'm saying? Got tired of that shit, you know what I'm saying? Came here and uh, st came to Atlanta, started the hip-hop fraternity. So I'm always reinventing myself, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And that's how you stay relevant. You know, you can't, you know, you, you're gonna play out in certain areas. When you play out, you gotta know how to flip and go to another level. Yes. And I think that that's, you know, one of the things that I learned. So, when, you know, when I tell people about the game, it's about transitioning, showing them like, yeah, nigga, you know, when I was pimping, nigga, you know what I'm saying, I got millions. I went platinum off the bitch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, niggas went platinum, got platinum CDs. I had a platinum CD before they ever, it was called Pussy, you know what I'm <laughs> Right. Me, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I mean, everybody in my neighborhood, you know, I can't lie on this camera. I'm the, the one that came through with the Rolls Royces, the Maseratis, you know, the brand new Benzes, you know, the jewelry, $100,000 bust down. The nigga even know what $100,000 bust down was. I live like an NBA player off the game. So the game went bad to me. You know, I was just telling niggas, you know, how the levels of the game, mm -hmm. you know, because cause the game that I had, Maybe one or two niggas knew how to do what I do, knew how to groom their bitch to do what I taught my bitches to do. You know what I'm saying? Because it, cause they can't wrap their brain around it. A lot mm -hmm. of motherfuckers got a ton of vision. A lot of motherfuckers stuck like Chuck. You know what I'm saying? They stuck on stupid. You know what I'm saying? So when you try to tell, elevate them, because you know, I told plenty of niggas like, man, you know, can't I fuck up, man? Ooh, I said, man, this is what you do. Man, ain't going to no strip club, man. I fuck that carpet, man. This bitch on the blade. The bitch got the pad of feet on the concrete, man. Hey, man, if the bitch ain't getting off the track, I don't want it, man. Mm -hmm. But they stay said, Ken, you know, Send me a jug. So I'm sending these niggas jugs all the time. I'm giving them money, but they don't understand, nigga. You know what I'm saying, nigga? I'm trying to get you the game. You know what I'm saying? Man. And they just, they just, they they couldn't take it like a fish can't take it to the earth. The hustle mom. Yes. Man, you know, you went through a lot, you know. You you lost your uh your man, you know, uh your husband. Was y'all married? Don't look I'm gonna leave that in the book. Okay. Okay, but but I just but, but 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 I mean just just uh well give me a spill on what what, what can we talk about? But I want to go back because yeah. you know how I like I like to go back to I want to know where you where you were raised how you were raised because oh yeah that's how she do it yeah because he know that already yeah <laughs> we have, I, I know your story because I got that out of you I need your story me being exposed to the game everything at a young growing age. up. You know, yeah, but I don't. I don't feel sorry for myself. It's just this is the cards I was dealt with. Like this is who I seen coming up. You know, pimps, players, baller shot where callers. You, where holes, were you born? Boosters, Sacramento, California. Sacramento, That's where California. California. Northern your, California. With your mother. With my mother working three jobs, but I have brothers that are teenagers. You know, like you know your mom. Mm -hmm had her first child at 16, and then had me at 40. So I have mm. brothers and sisters. That are far apart. Yes, and a sister that was pregnant at the same time when my mom was pregnant, mm. she was 18. But you would think that, because when your mom have you older, she has more tolerance, she know a lot about raising a child and so forth. But she was busy, because, you know, my father. Where know, was he? He was absent in my life, but he was there for the older teenagers mm. so I probably was like keep that man by having a baby mm -hmm. but it didn't work my dad my mom and so dad, he didn't spend no time with you none at all but no. you knew him you knew who he was I knew who he was he was just 
I seen him like one time and um it was, you know, he it, it was crazy because How old I, were you when you saw him that one time? I was like about seven years old. And you remember that? And I remembered it so good, but my, my heart was crushed because he treated me different than the other children because he tried to accuse my mom for having a relationship and saying that I wasn't his child, but he knew I was because me and my sister are ghetto twins. We 14 months apart. We look like twins, mm -hmm. but he was doing that to mess with my mom, right. but not knowing that it affects children. Exactly. You know, and the father I had were my brothers, my pimp brothers that I looked up to that made sure that they looked out for their little sisters. And, mm -hmm. and I thought the world of them, you know, mm -hmm. and seeing all these fancy cars and these beautiful women and, um, you know, people may, you know, look down on it, but at least I wasn't molested. Right. My mom didn't leave me with, you know, Pastor Jenkins down the street, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so I got a lot of game, you know, at a young age. I I learned how to speak ism. I, I You know, that's the language. Right. right. You know, that we speak. So, as, so growing up as a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Because you were exposed to that life at a young age, but I'm no, sure but that's not. Yeah, I, was a, I had a good, you know, childhood and stuff, but I always thought about money. Mm -hmm. I always wanted money. I was like a gold digger mm -hmm. just to keep it 100 and funky with you. Mm -hmm. I was born a gold digger with a shovel in my hand, <laughs> like just wanting the money. You know, and then, yeah, you know, yeah, you want and, that you know, It's like yeah. some people are in a cult. Data. You know what I mean? But this ism is a religion to me, you know, and um, it's a religion. The ism is a religion to me, you know, because I was raised on it and seeing how much money came from it. And um, it, it, you know, I had a good childhood. I was, you know, in drill team and cheerleader, but I always was a snooty madooty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you didn't have nothing for me, I ain't talking to you, boy. You know, and my brothers had me fucked up in the head like that. It's so funny because I saw a post on Instagram. I don't, I don't, I didn't share that with you. And it was a show. They were interviewing people on the streets, and they interviewed this two young ladies, and were asking them what kind of guys they would talk to. And one of them said. If you don't have money, well, for her, if you didn't have money or in a gang, because her brothers, like what you're saying, is so just the same way. Spoil me, they give me this, 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 this. So if you can't come with it, don't even try to step. And so exact the same way. Or brainwash. You know what I I'm get saying? It. I get it. And, I, and I, can, I can accept that. I don't need no sit down with Ayana Van Zandt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I know who I am and I know where I came from. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yes. So, yeah. Because some people always feel like the way how you turn up is always like they're looking for the traumatic thing that happened to you nothing, when you were yes. younger. And nothing, never. I had the bit, my refrigerator stayed full. But like some people, they would be like, um, I'll be like, come over to my house and play. They'd be like, mm mm. Like they're going to walk in the door and just come out a hoe, you know? <laughs> but because it was like pimps and hoes and all kind of shit going right. on, dope dealers. and But it was money and nice cars and everything. And uh, it wasn't no raids at the house or none of that. But I'm like, well, you want me to come to your house and your daddy is a crackhead and your auntie is a drunk and it's all these crazy other things going on at your house, but you don't want to come to my house. Mm -hmm. And we can eat all the food we want and you guys ain't got nothing but an onion and an ice cube and they fighting. Mm. But you talking about all of the good things or the things that you saw, which is the money and the cars and stuff that, you know, you glorified, you I glamorized glorified it. it. Yes. But I'm sure but with all of that, comes the bad stuff too. Yes, so did you not see all of that? Abusive relationships. Yeah. Um, people uh, people getting arrested. Certain, people certain, passing I, away, dying, thing, getting like, shot. Like, um, like pimps. Uh, you didn't see that? You hear about abuse a yeah, lot of times. Of course time. we did. Of course I did. You but know you didn't care about it? That was I mean, like, it's where you live. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I was raised around mm -hmm. pimps, ballers, hoes, boosters, mm -hmm. scammers. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what yeah, we looked up yeah. to. Simps. You know, <laughs> was some simps, simps around there. Yeah. Was some mm -hmm. Simps and Trizix or Resound is there, but you know what I'm saying? For the most part. For the most part, but <laughs> that's what I seen. And that's what motivated mm -hmm. me so, to mm -hmm. want money and just break on boys. And then, like, my last interviews you've seen, um, like, my brother would tell me, don't let a boy have sex with you. 
Because if he have sex with you and don't give you no money, he going to talk shit about you. But if he give you some money, he going to tell nobody that secret. Mm -hmm. And then he going to give you some more and some more because guess what? He invested. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.